Hello out there ZX Next fans. This video series that I'm creating here, a recorded series, is um, by request from a few people. I have made something similar to this already, live, but you have to pick the bones out of the video. There's a lot of unnecessary parts. I'm going to try and keep them down to a minimum here. This particular vid is all about setting up from scratch. So all I've got here is Visual Studio Code. I'm going to show you how I set mine up to work with Next Dev. And, uh, you know, you'll find it's not as daunting as it looks. I remember it wasn't long ago, I was trying to read it myself with no help. And it seemed impossible to set up. Anyway, I've got VS Code, so you'll need to get that by yourself. You'll notice I've got these four extensions. You can ignore the top one, uh, the top two, but you may as well get them. They're not going to hurt, especially code lens that can help. What that I have to show you later, but that you hover over stuff and it pops up with information. But this one here is what I really do use. Emboric. So install those by clicking this icon here and writing them names in to that marketplace search extension okay so when you've got that installed the next thing you'll want to do is find a space on your disk your hard drive where you want to set up your dev environment in terms of the next dev I've used well I've used my C drive and then I've made a folder called ZX Next, but I'm actually going to create a new folder here. I'm going to put it on my removable drive. You won't really see that very well, but I've got a 1440p monitor here, so it doesn't show up too well in. Anyway, all I'm doing is I'm on my F drive, I'm creating a new folder. Let's call it ne ZX Next Dev. Let's not even have a space. <coughs> there we go. So in there, we'll create another new folder and we'll call it SD card. You can call that whatever you want, but it, we're going to be storing that, our next SD card in there. Oops. Um, the next folder we've usually called bin, but in reality it's c spec with a couple of other things included. Um, let's just call it bin again. Okay, so we've got we've got our folder and we've got bin and SD card empty folders inside. The next thing we want to do is Google C spec download. And here it's the top Google result. Oh. Sorry about that. Um yeah, so this is our latest C spec here. I'm actually using this one, but I'm going to download the newest one. Okay, so I've opened that up. Here it is in 7-zip. So just to be nice and simple, I'm going to drag it to there temporarily I'll right click and extract to there why not what I really want is the files inside here we don't really need all of them but they're like under 10 meg so 
I'm going to copy every file and fold up and I'm putting it inside bin like so okay so c spec can go so can that <coughs> excuse me okay so hopefully you're following along so far What we want with HDF Monkey is we want the ability to um, notice I went to the second link down. I think that might be the best one. Yeah, Windows Binary. That enables us to move files, the next file we create in our code. And it enables us to... Um, to push them to the SD card via command line. Let me just read this properly and figure out where it is. <laughs> I remember finding this hard to find before. Apologize for this. Should probably pause the video. <laughs> what I really need to avoid is doing editing on the videos because it takes too much time. I just simply don't have time to do it. It's a good website that he's done this. He, he's got the Windows build. Here it is, finally. Right, I remember finding this hard to find. So this is the website. Right. We're on Google. We've, de we've Googled HDF Monkey EXE download. The second one down is lib4dev.in. And then rolling down, we'll see optional software, HDF Monkey. Ignore that download here, ignore the source code. Binary for Windows is what we want. Click that, it takes us to this lovely website. And all the way at the bottom, ye old times. This is not my first 8 bit related page. No, that's not even the right one. Why is it gone? Here it is. Sorry. He's compiled it for Windows. You can find it here. There we go, it's downloaded. Right, so back in our dev environment folder that we're creating, let's just drag HDF Monkey in there. Let's do the same thing. Delete the zip. We have HDF Monkey.exe, we can copy that. Paste it into this folder. So I've t pasted it into the bin. And I'll delete that. Okay, the next thing we want, and the last thing, SJASM plus EXE download. Seems like I've already gone to this one, so I'm going to go there. This one probably is fine as well. Right, where's the download on this? This is just the docs, actually. So I've done a search for download. Latest release, GitHub. And here we're at the releases. Down here we've got the actual win zip.
and there we go SJ ASM plus do the exact same thing oops right inside this all we actually want is the exe so copy it paste it into your bin and there it is okay delete these two folders I said that was the last thing I was lying we also need the ZX Next um, OS SD card try and find that so if my search has led me to here but I don't know if this is the right website uh, the right page actually <clears throat> this was not the page I got it from before let's write ZX next C uh, spec next C spec SD card same page <coughs> this might be it but there was a better page ZX next current software distribution SD card I think this is it here we go so the one I've got is this I'm not gonna download it it's just a waste downloading 128 meg again onto my computer instead I'm going to copy it from my from my existing hard drive but that's what you're going to get well how long is this it's only going to take one minute let's just get it all right so why that's coming through we're just waiting we're going to be opening up SD card here. Now, while we're waiting for that, because it is halfway through, we'll we'll keep this folder here separate, right? That's going to contain our files that will never change. They're part of the dev environment setup. Like our C spec is for booting the game. The SD card is part of that. Um, and HDF Monkey and SJS and Plus are to do with compiling and moving the files onto the SD card or compiling the code into a next um, file extension so it can be read by the next. But we will also want a project folder. So let's just create another one for the time being. I'm going to not use this because I've already got one set up, but um, we'll just call it ZX next projects we can put an underscore there here's where you'll create your projects and eventually you'll get onto a version control thing like github and you'll have like um your repo maybe set up here and then you can link all projects there's many ways of doing that but don't get too involved with that unless you know what you're doing you can always just take a copy of this folder to make a backup, you know, you don't need GitHub really. These files are tiny anyway. Okay, that's come through. And we're going to drag him in there. Extract here don't need a folder and this is where it got really complicated for me because I read the instructions several times and I've had to do something different to what the instructions say to get mine working <coughs> delete the zip now you need these two files here to be sitting near the SD card but in 
the instructions, it says to put them sitting next to c spec So that's wrong. But then not only that, but you have to use 7-zip and open this MMC file. And then inside there, machines. And it's mf, enextmf dot rom. I believe that's the one I had to find. The only way I found this was reading through error logs, and it said that that file was missing. But we won't get into that either. <coughs> so I've dragged it from the zip. I've left it in the zip, but I've also copied it to that folder where the zip is sitting. And finally, we are complete. We're done. closing some windows down okay so the next thing we want to do is create a project and write start writing some code oh I've just realized I made a mistake so I put that into ZX next projects that's completely wrong let's cut that Go back into next dev, into the SD card, and <coughs> paste it in there instead. That's much better. Now back in our projects. This is how I do it. Every time I make a new project, I'll put ZXN so I know it's a next project, unnecessary. In fact, let's not do it. Let's just put. I was going to put Hello World, right? But Hello World is actually not the easiest thing to do on the next. It's harder than uh, drawing a sprite. So we're not even going to do that. We're just going to make a project and not even run it this session. But we're going to make Sprites 101. That's our next session. As soon as I get this set up, I'll be ending the video and making another one all about just drawing sprites to the screen. Inside this, and all this is optional, it's just the way I've set it up. But I you know, urge you to do the same and then you can follow my videos much more easily. But we'll make a source folder called SRC and all of our code is going to go in there. But next to the SRC folder, we want to create a bat file. Called run.bat. Again, very optional. There's more than one way. You could just write this into command line every time if you wanted. Let's have build.bat as well. This is how I've got it done. Okay. Just get my copy up to make sure I don't get it wrong for you. ITO. So build.bat. I've, I've opened it in Notepad. And this is going to want to build our next code. It needs to know where SJSM plus is, which we put in bin. So I'll copy and paste that file, that file address. Paste it in there, forward slash sjasm plus dot exe. Oh, in fact, I've just realized I've forgotten something to show you as well. And it's not going to be so easy because I've not got my taskbar. <coughs> if you write into your search bar, environment, just the word environment 
it'll say edit the system environment variables. It's going to bring up this window. You click here, and then you click path, and you'll see I've added my bin file here. Although It actually seems that's not necessary. I did do that in my previous uh, Windows install. But that must have been for something else because I haven't got it this go. So ignore, ignore what I just said. I've not manually added anything to the path variable there. So in other words, you write your... You write your full address for SJSM Plus and you don't put the EXE. Then you tell it where the code's going to be. And we're going to call every script. When we begin our game, the first script we're going to write is main.asm. That's our launch um, file. And then two dashes ZX next equals C spec. I received help with that. I don't know exactly what it does, but of course it links it up so that it knows um, you're dealing with C-spec. I think it helps the debugger. Main list is, is an optional thing that we output and that helps us know exactly what location in memory certain variables are stored. It comes in extremely handy. So you put that into the command line like this, but then you also put it into the code to create it. Which I'll show you later. So let's zoom in on that. So there's that. I'll pause on it for one second just to let you be able to pause it. I save that. So that's in there now. Now we're going to edit run.bat. The first thing we want to do is call build.bat. So we don't have to call both. We just we only have to invoke run.bat to do this. And this is more like strange command prompt code that I don't really understand. But basically if that doesn't error, then we do what's inside these brackets. We're back in our next stroke bin. This time it's hdfmonkey.exe. Make sure you do get the spelling full on correct. Uh, and don't put the exe. Okay, sorry about that. Use the word put. Now we want to get the name of the SD card. Which is that so we get the full file address first copy that in another gotcha that I've just remembered is I had to change this name now you'll have to go to view file name extensions so that you can see the extensions But you have to change it to IMG. Forgive me if I'm wrong there, but that's how I had to do it. You notice it now recognises it as an image file, but that, that's irrelevant. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's how I had to do it. Let's try leaving it as MMC. But be aware that if you get problems, just try changing that to IMG. And then, of course, in here... Let's get the full name of that so we don't misspell it. Slash TBB. TB Blue. I just went for the 128 meg. The way this is set up, right? This, this dev environment. You're only going to be making one game at a time. So it will overwrite 
we name them the same. So if you make game A and it takes up 100 megabytes, which is a, you know, a huge amount, um, and then you go and make game B and that takes up 50 megabytes, it'll just overwrite the 100 megabyte one. It'll still be on your PC. It just won't be on the next SD. Anyway, so back in this bin, this time it's cspec.exe, and I do have the exe there. We probably need to add that to the path if we didn't. But I'm not 100% sure. I'm just copying what I've already got after some trial and error. The dash R. <clears throat> simply makes the window of C spec remember its size and position. BRK, it's in the documents. I don't remember exactly what it is. It's in the C spec documents, but it's something to do with breakpoints. ZX next. Maybe I should get up these documents so I can explain what they are. One sec. All right, I've got I've got them loaded. So ZX Next enables the next thread hardware registers, so that's very important. And it should be double dash. In fact, no, it's single dash. Sorry. The next one is dash next ROM. Now that enables the uh, ROM files for the SD card that it needs inside the next hardware. Again, a bit hazy on that. You don't really need to know it to write a game for the next. The BRK. Yes, it enables the break opcode DD01, which we'll look at another time. We already have in my live sessions, but we'll look at them in... in um, detail in one of the, the tutorial sessions coming up um i've told you what r does that remembers the size and the, sh the uh, position of the window oh oh no it's okay tv that hides the like scan lines Otherwise, you get these fake scan lines. Basic keys changes the keyboard layout so that it matches more to do with Spectrum, I think. Again, I'm not an expert on that. V-Sync. Well, it does what it says on the tin, I expect. Sync to display for smoother scrolling when using 60. No biggie. You don't need it. If you get any problems, don't put it on and try without it. But also I do minus sound, which is stops the sound. If you don't have open AL installed, it um it gives you an error. So you're best off just putting no sound. It, you don't put add sound to your games until the end anyway normally. Then we're gonna also use map map equals main dot map. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, in the code, we um, will create a project map in code. It's a one line thing. I believe that gives you the ability to see your variable names and label names inside the emulator. So again, not needed. And then this is needed. MMC. Scroll this while I'm writing this one. I've said C, but it's not C. It's MMC equals, and then you want your SD card location. So we're going to SD. We take this address here. This is just how I do it. It's probably way easier ways. 
forward slash or pack slash again I think you can use either so I've got the SD card full name there after that have I already put the uh, bracket yes I have so we've got that bracket there then I've just done this else pause now that stops it so you can still see the error it just makes it's an easy way and what I've actually done is I've made two of these one with and one without that it just means that the window automatically closes when you close c-spec if you don't have that but the thing is if you have an error it'll just open and close in one frame and you won't even read the error you won't even see the window I doubt so when I save that oh. so that is now saved and we are finally set up and in our projects we've got a, a project created completely empty but it's got the ability to build and run inside this is where we right we don't even need this file explorer anymore so inside code vs code we'll open folder this is all my other projects let's not use this let's go to the removable one I've clicked sprites 101 that's the name of my project I'm not clicking source and I'm selecting the folder and we are now in that folder with build.bat run and the source folder inside and here we'll create a new file main.asm and this is it this is our next code up and running um, you know our next environment up and running I'll show you the boilerplate that I use and then the very next session we'll do um, drawing sprites to the screen so let me just get my uh, pre-written work up on the screen Righty, so I'm going to keep this simple. There's a lot of optional extras you can do with SJASM, which you'll have to pick up yourself along the way. I will be showing some of them off in other videos, but for now we're going to get what I see as the essentials. Let's use lowercase. So org8000, is that needs to be tabbed. Um, that's our memory, our code start address in memory. Here is an SJASM um, compiler directive, is what I call it. It's something along those lines, like a pre-compiler directive. You can select what machine you're working in. And I've got gone for next. Note how the autocomplete works. Now, I hope that's the same with yours. It's not like I've written it before. I think that might be... Um, they might be just picking it up because I've written it before but then again I'd, I've never written all of these so it's getting them from somewhere anyway C spec map main dot map now we've declared the map that we referred to in the uh, run dot bat it was that <laughs> it was that simple to do that we'll also want a label called start and here's where our code would start. So for example, we disable interrupts maybe. This is what I've been doing. I've also found a trick told to me by um, some experts on my channel to set the stack pointer to just below our code. So note that that is too below that. Is too below that. And I believe that that gives us a much larger stack 
bit than we should have. It was a trick because I ran out of space in my stack at one point. Don't worry about stack at all if you if you're brand new. You can still get by without with knowing very little about stack, and you certainly didn't didn't don't need to do this. Anyway, that's what you would have as a main little program. Then you might have jump main loop, which is what I have. Then I have main loop. And, oh, not return. This will just continually loop. Um, inside here, you'd have something like update function, draw function. Just, they'd get called one, two, one, two, one, two. So I have, I mean, I can't do it now, but I have game dot update, game dot draw, okay? And then I have a separate game ASM which has those um, routines in there. We're not going to use that just yet. This is purely the boilerplate to get the code up and running on the next. We want one called stack size and we want it to be 20. And that's a constant with equal. This is a variable byte. Well, actually it's defining space of size stack size and they'll all be zeros so that just creates space on the in the memory to the size of 20 and it puts zeros inside of all of it stack top equals zero uh, db zero sorry so it's, it's not a constant Right, the reason for all them three, I myself am still a little tiny bit hazy. I never, I got help with it and I never had to investigate it any further. But long story short, we're dealing with, um, with SJASM to create this next file. And this is how we do it. And them, f them numbers here are relevant for that. So the first one we do is save next, open main.next start which is our start of our code here so bef this is before that but then our actual code begins here stack top now again I'm not sure whether that did, could that go anywhere I think this could be put anywhere and again I, that's one of the things I'm hazy about I don't really know and I haven't had to find out yet. The next thing we do is set the um, minimum core that we're supporting. Some sort of config. I used to know what that did, but I can't remember. There's, you can have up to four options there. There's a website called SJASM doc documentation, documentation that will tell you everything you need to know if you really want to know. Okay, so that's how I've got it. That is the boilerplate. Now, to create a next game, we need to have um, we need to have it do something really, so that we can know it's worked. Try to figure something that's nice and simple. Uh, I believe we could still use, um, oh God, I do not want to make it so that it takes another 10 minutes just to get it working because that's going to be in the very next video. Delete those, they're not actually needed. Neither is that, as you can see, it'll just run straight through. What we should see is it'll load to the next file and just hang and do nothing. 
Now, we're in the correct folder here. Look, I've just pressed Control at key on the keyboard. You can also go to here. Um, all we have to do is write run.bat for it to run. Just trying to make sure it will actually run. Or have I forgotten something? Okay, this is what came up, but it came up in my other window. So as you can see, error zero, warning zero, compiled 30 lines. Here's my next. Press space to start the next. Go to the browser with enter. Ah, we should have saw, we should, should be seeing next there. Hmm. Oh, God, give me a mo. This means I'm going to have to edit this bloody video now, don't it?